If we are the body, why it's his arms reaching? If we are the body, why aren't his arms reaching? I ask that question because I'm a Gideon. In the Matthew 28, 19, the Great Commission, the last thing Jesus said was, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost to all nations. And how are we going to go out and teach all nations? When I really read this and took it seriously, it made me belong to a Gideon organization that does their best to reach out to the world and give out scripture. How else are we going to educate the world about Jesus if not through God's word? There's a blood that calls to life that paid my way. Yes, death was its price when it flowed down from the cross. My sins were gone. My sins for God. Yes, there's a grave that tried to hide this precious blood that gave me life. But in three days he breathed again and rose to stand in our defense. So I come to tell you he's alive, to tell you that he'll dry every tear that falls. So I'll come to tell you that he saves, to shout and proclaim that he's coming back for you. There's a blood that sights the blind, that'll heal the sick, the lonely finds. It has the power to free us all. That's all we need to do is go to Jesus. And that's what we're here about today. What are the Gideons? We're just born again Christian men. We put Bibles throughout the world, through hotels, doctor's office, hospitals, nursing homes. Our main Bible that you see in the hotels we give five, we buy so many of them. We give five dollars for them. The little bitty Bible. We buy millions of those each year. This is our little testament. We pay less our new contract. We actually got the price lowered. We paid less than a dollar and twenty-five cents for these. How can you honor somebody other than send them a Gideon honor card. We want to honor people when they pass away. If you got a Sunday school teacher, if you got a pastor, if you got somebody that does something good, honor them with a Gideon card in recognition. I'm not sure if y'all have a display here about the Gideon recognition. Recognize somebody. 
Buy some Bibles for somebody while they're alive. But also, when a, someone passes away, buy so many Bibles in their in honor of their name that they'll get distributed everywhere. Send a Bible in memory of somebody. The Gideons are in over 200 countries. In over 90 languages, the Gideon Bibles are in every kind of ma language you can imagine. But let's talk about local. You know, we can talk about what we're doing in China. We can talk about what we're doing in India, in Africa. You know, I don't know if you realize it now. Right now, we have over 4 million Methodists in Africa, in some of the foreign countries. About 50, I used to be part of what's called the LACE, Leadership and Excellence in, for the Methodist Church. And one of the things that I learned here in the United States, our membership has gone down. We, about 50, 60 years ago, we were up around 14 million. Now we're still at 14 million, but about half of them are overseas. And one of the things the Gideons helped do is get these Bibles out for people to read. And also, we go to jail. We have a jail service. The Gideons have a jail service. Let me tell you, I can tell you, you a lot of times you'll have Gideons that'll come in and they'll tell about somebody out in some foreign country that did this or some foreign country that did that. I like to tell a story about what happened here in Pike County. We were given Bibles at Hillbilly Days. As a matter of fact, we gave out 3,500 Bibles last Hillbilly Days. And there was a young man came over to me, and he had his friends with him. He had his friends with him. It just wasn't by, it's so easy to give a little testimony when you're by yourself. But he has friends with him. And he came over to me and he said, you may not remember me, but you gave me a New Testament in the jail. A nice looking young man. Probably about 23. He said, and I took it to heart. I found me a church. I've been baptized. And he's telling this right in front of his friends. Now, my daughter goes to Trinity. I'm a Methodist. My daughter goes to Trinity. On Easter, she asked me to go to church with her. And you know how Easter goes, and Christmas, the church gets full, and we were sitting in our row, me, my wife, my grandkids, and my daughter and her husband, and our row was completely full. The church was full. And they asked the young kids to go out so they could have their youth. And during that time, there was about 30 or 40 people standing in the back that came down and sat down. One guy sat down in my row. It was me, my wife, grandson, and this guy. And I leaned over to my wife, and I said, I think, and you might not hear me, I think I know that guy. I think I used to referee football boys basketball, girls basketball, baseball, fast pitch girls softball, used to do it all. I said, I think I used to referee with that guy. Well, after the church service was over, he stood up and he said, he shook my hand and he said, you gave me a Bible out, a Gideon Bible, just a few months ago. You told us that once we got out of here, to find a church. He said, I found me a church. I've been baptized. So yes, the Gideon's Bible, he, it wasn't anything I said that night. It was that Bible I gave to him, let him read. And he found out for himself about the story of Jesus. And it made a difference in his life. We have the opportunity to make a difference in somebody's life. But we've got to do something about it. We have to ask people to come to Christ. As a Gideon organization, we, the Gideons, need your help. Pray for open doors. Pray for open doors. 
What do I mean by open doors? We used to go into the schools. I used to work for the school system. You have some teachers here that work for the school system, used to work for the school system. We give, gave Bibles out to fifth graders and the seniors. We're no longer allowed to do that. What did it take? One letter. One letter from the ACLU making a little threat. Now we cannot do it. So we need your prayers. We need your prayers to, for us to get back into the school system and give out Bibles. When we, when we go there, we don't preach, we don't do anything. We just give out a Bible. If God has spoken to you, we need your financial help. Last year, the Gideons gave out over 80 million Bibles. We gave out 3,500 at Pillibility Days. We went up to the college and we gave up out about seven or 800 of them. So we'd appreciate any help that you could give us. And why do we need your help? Because of the Great Commission. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. That's what the Gideon organization is trying to do. Please help the Gideons. Please help us spread the word. Now, I've also been asked to do a little message while I'm up here. We need to get out of the boat. We need to get out of the boat. That's what Jesus said to Peter. We need to get out of the boat. Can you imagine us being on that boat with Peter? And Jesus said, come. Not only did he say come, he said, Eli me. And that's another story, but that's, that was saying, it is I. That goes back to Exodus, the burning bush. The burning bush, God said, it is I. Jesus was declaring that he was the God. John 19, 25 through 27, the NIV version says, Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother there, and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to her, Woman, here is your son. And to the disciple... Here is your mother. From that time on, this disciple took her into his home. I love the story of Peter. Now, John was the disciple, the beloved disciple. And my story today is, where was Peter? So many times, I fall so short. I fall, I fail. I fail to witness when I, when I should. I make mistakes. So when I read about the Bible and I see where Peter made mistakes, it makes me feel good that these disciples lived with him. They worshiped with him. And yet they made mistakes. All the disciples had to abandon except the beloved disciple, John. Peter! Peter! Nowhere to be found. Remember, Peter was his rock. But where's Peter? Let's go back in time just a little bit. Peter had seen Jesus heal many, many people. Peter had seen Jesus raise three people from the dead. Jesus walked on water with Peter. Jesus fed 5,000. Jesus, as the scripture said this morning, had just healed 10 lepers. Now, only John was there. Where was Peter? 
his rock. When Jesus sent the two disciples to prepare for the last summer, supper, who did he send? Peter and John. At Gethsemane, Jesus took three disciples with him to pray. To his little private prayer. Peter was one of them. Jesus told Peter that he would deny him three times. Peter said, Jesus, you're go Jesus said, told Peter, you're going to deny me three times. And Peter looked at him and said, I am ready to die for you, Jesus. I'm ready to die for you. But when it came time, where was Peter? I love the story of Peter. Satan is always at work on us. He was at work with, on Peter that night. Satan tempts us with money. He tempts us with gossip. He tempts us with leading us down the wrong path. And he tells us that it's okay to wait till tomorrow. There's a great story about Satan. Satan told, brought his best three demons to him. He said, I want to fool the Christians. Go out and find me some way to fool the Christians. So the demons left. And a few days later, Satan called them back and said, I want to find out what you want to do. The first demon came to Satan and said, let's just tell them there's no Jesus. Satan said, that won't work. Everybody knows there's a Jesus. My, I know there's a Jesus. Satan, this is Satan talking. I know there's a Jesus. That's not going to work. When the other uh, demon said, well, let's tell them that Jesus didn't raise from the dead. Satan said, that won't work. 500 people saw Jesus at one time. The disciples have seen him. Many people saw Jesus after he was resurrected. The third demon went to Satan and said, let's tell them to wait till tomorrow. Satan looked at him and said, I'll give you anything you want. Because that's what life's about. When somebody asks us to do something, what do we normally say? Well, let me think about it and wait till tomorrow. I remember as a young man, I was sitting in a church. And I was sitting beside a Christian. I wasn't a Christian. And they were doing a hymn, hymnal there at the end to call people up, just as I am. And the guy beside me said, you probably need to go up. And my response was, I'll, I'll, I'll think about it. I'll wait. How many times do, do we know that somebody waits and puts it off until tomorrow? Do we deny Jesus in our actions? They ask Jesus, what the two great commandments? Love God and love your neighbor. Do we love our neighbor like we should? Who is our neighbor? Do we witness for Jesus? Well, I'm afraid I might upset somebody if I witness in front of them. Do your neighbors know you're a Christian? If someone went up where you live and they said, is that a Christian house right there? Would your neighbors be able to say, yes, that's a Christian house. I know, I see them go to church all the time. Do we miss church for ball games and stuff like that? Oop, oop, oop. It's things like sports events. Playing golf. There was a preacher one time. Now, this is probably not a true story. There was a preacher one time that took a week off. And he was an average golfer. And it was on Sunday he went golfing instead of going to church when he was on vacation. He hit his first hole in one. But he couldn't go back and tell anybody. Because he did it on Sunday. Maybe a true story. How many times have we been somewhere on Sunday? I know I have. 
Sometimes I've been on vacation, maybe had some excuse. During Jesus' trials in the courtyard, a servant girl said, this man was with him, and Peter denied it. Someone else said later, you are one of them, and Peter denied it. An hour or so later, someone said, certainly this fellow was with him. He is a Galilean, and Peter denied it. And I love this part. It's only mentioned in one book of the Bible, Luke. Peter was out in the outer courtyard, and when he denied Jesus the third time, Peter happened to look. And Jesus was being on trial, probably from Cephas to the Sanhedrin, happened to walk by, and they met eye to eye, probably through the doorway. Can you imagine what Peter felt like? Here, Pete, Jesus had predicted it. Peter says, I'll die with you. Now Peter has denied him three times. And Luke mentions Jesus walking by, and they saw each other eye to eye for only a second or so. Have you ever been talking about somebody, gossiping about somebody, about that time they walked up? I have. Can you imagine what Peter felt like? His Lord and Savior, somebody he'd die for. The Bible says that Peter went and cried, wept over it. Can you imagine? Can you imagine what Peter went through? And then what happened? The crow, he heard the rooster. Peter wept bitterly. Do we follow Jesus' great commission? Do we go and teach in all nations? But here's the good side. Later on, what did Peter do? After Jesus was put to death, one of the most horrible deaths ever, being on the cross, once he was resurrected, once it, who was the first one to go in the tomb? John was leading. But when he got there, Peter ran in. Now brave Peter. And after the resurrection, I love this. When they'd finished, when they'd finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? And Peter said, yes, Lord, you know I love you. And again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And Peter answered, yes, Lord, you know I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time Jesus said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. And what did Jesus say? Feed my sheep. Are we feeding the sheep? Are we doing the Great Commission? Are we spreading Jesus' love throughout the world? Are we doing our part? I don't know about you guys, but we need to try our best. This world is getting really, really messed up. We need Christians. We need, we need to spread the word of love. Remember, Jesus said, love God and love one another. If we did this, what a beautiful, beautiful world it would be. Yes, there's a blood that cost the life 
that paid my way. Death was its price. Thank you.